Christ. And listen, this whole racial thing, it's all about bloodlines. The Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But when we start talking about race, we are talking about bloodlines. Now listen, as a church, we are physical people here, but we are, we are also people who have been born again. We are saved people. And we are not here today. We are not assembled together because of a bloodline, of a family relation. We are here because what we all have in common is a spiritual heritage. And that is Jesus Christ. We all have the same Father, Jesus Christ. A spiritual Father. We, have, we all have that. And that's what we have in common. And listen, race is all about bloodlines. They don't matter to God. God doesn't care about that. Those, these things do not matter to him. It was God that said, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Yet churches all across America today are helping make things worse by teaching this false doctrine, making a big deal about the Jews calling them chosen people because of their bloodline. Because of where they physically descend from. Now, why would we do that? Why would we do that when the Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God? Why would we do that when the Bible teaches that we're corruptible, that we all have bear, we bear the image of the earthy talking about Adam? Okay, Jews come from Adam too. Black people come from Adam. Chinese people come from Adam. We all come from Adam. And unless we are born again, folks, we cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We are all corruptible. It doesn't matter your bloodline. I'm going to show you several verses. God does not care about bloodline. And yet churches today, there are churches they're having that, that have Israel Sunday. They will have an Israel Sunday where they will get Israeli flags that they will fly in their church. They will a lot of times try to find like a saved, a saved Jew. Okay. And listen, you know, if he's a saved Jew, he's saved just like us, all right? But they will. They'll make a big deal. Like, oh, this guy's of Jewish descent. You know, he used to be a Jew, and he got saved, and, you know, and he's a Messianic Jew, and they'll make a big deal about him. They'll have these prophecy preachers come in that all make a big deal about Israel, and they will celebrate a physical people. And then they'll start talking about what God's going to do with the nation of Israel one of these days and how God's going to save them all and God's going to put them back in their land and the kingdom of God's coming that's for the physical nation of Israel. Really? Flesh and blood's going to inherit the kingdom of God? The Bible says that can't happen. Why are we making a big deal about that? Why does that matter, especially in a church? Listen, in our messed up country, I get our government doing these things. I get it when guys, bozos like Ted Cruz are out there saying stuff, you know, stand with Israel, stand with Israel. I get that when they do it, but why are pastors doing that? Why are churches making a big deal about that? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And what a lot of these people have done, because they'll see these verses, they have tried to separate the kingdom of God from the kingdom of heaven. Well, the kingdom of heaven is for the Jews. That's what they're teaching. That the kingdom of heaven is for the Jews. But listen, they're the same thing. And I'll prove it to you. I've got a bunch of verses I could use. I'm only going to show you a few. I don't want to beat a dead horse. But Matthew 19, 23 says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven... And again, I say unto you that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Oh, notice how he said kingdom of heaven on one and a kingdom of God on another. They're clearly two different things. Well, listen, here's one way I can explain it real easy. Okay. It, now, I understand we don't have a king in America, but let's just say that, you know, we, did, we were a monarchy and Donald Trump was the king. It would, it would be appropriate to say, you know, that Donald Trump is, you know, we, or we could call America the kingdom of Trump or the kingdom of the USA. Okay. If it's the kingdom of Trump, well, why do we call it the kingdom of Trump? Because his kingdom is the United States of America. Why do we call it the kingdom of God, the kingdom of, God, of heaven? Well, because God is the one who is over heaven. And so calling it the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, it's just like calling it the kingdom of Trump or the kingdom of USA or the kingdom of Kim Jong-un versus the uh, kingdom of North Korea or whatever the country. That's what that means. It's the same thing. And then look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Well, you don't have to turn. I'm going to go quickly to these. He says, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And then in Luke 7, 28, where he's talking about the same thing, 
For verily I say to you, you, among these that are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Same quote, same thing. One gospel says kingdom of heaven. One says kingdom of God, because it's the same thing. Matthew 13, 11, he said unto them, because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, it is not given. Talking about the, he's talking to the disciples. It's given to you to know why, because they were believers in Christ, but it was not given to them talking about physical Jews to know the kingdom of heaven. And then in verse uh, Matt, or Mark four eleven. He said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without are these things done in parables. So clearly they're the same thing. And listen, the Jews, they were the physical children, but they had no faith. Therefore, they were thrust out of the kingdom of heaven. And Gentiles who were of faith took their place. Turn over to Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. This is, this is very clear in the Bible. Look at Matthew 8, verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said, and that followed, verily I say to you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. He's talking about the centurion, a Gentile. This man had great faith. And Jesus said, I can't find faith like this in Israel. And he said, I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You all see that? He's saying, hey, there's going to be people from all over referring to the Gentiles that are going to come and sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, men who are of faith in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom, those who physically were a part of that kingdom, the Bible says they're going to be thrust out. You know why they got thrust out? Because they didn't have faith. They were never born again. You know why they were thrust out? Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It didn't matter that their bloodline was one that was from Abraham. The Bible says they were cast out because they were only children of the flesh. And they that are in the flesh cannot please God. God does not look at any physical people in this world and say, they're special, they're chosen. But he does look at those who are of a spiritual line that comes from Jesus Christ. And we get that by faith and we are chosen. We are special. We see that the, the kingdom of God, it's something that's inside of us. Luke 17 verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say low here or low there for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. How is the king? You know, it's all about that physical kingdom in Israel. We need to support Israel. We need to stand with Israel. We need to fight for Israel. We need to give them millions of our tax dollars every day so God will bless our nation. You know, we need to go and we need to give them military support and we need to bomb the Palestinians into oblivion and we need to, you know, kill all the Muslims around there because that land belongs to Israel. This is, this stuff's being preached, folks, in churches. Baptist preachers will get up and talk about bombing all the Muslims and killing all the Palestinians. I mean, Whatever happened to the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I don't want to get out of myself. That's coming later. But listen, they're making a huge deal about this kind of thing. And the Bible says the kingdom of God is within you. No, we got to get that land. It's got to go back to Israel because Jesus Christ is going to set up a kingdom there one day that's going to go to the physical Jews. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. They miss that. They don't see it. In Colossians 1.25, the Bible says the kingdom of God is within you. What's that talking about? Well, Colossians 1.25, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now listen, I can see where people read the Old Testament and maybe get the idea that it's about a physical people. But the Bible makes it very clear in Colossians that this was a mystery that was hid in the past ages. It was there, the truth was there, but it was a mystery that was hidden. But now it has been revealed to us and that is that mystery among the Gentiles, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know why the kingdom of God is within us? is because Christ is in us today. 